Okay, thank you. Before we begin, uh, I have to do Zoom today because I have three counties and a CLE thing. And I think something like, no, that's all. Does anybody does anybody have any opposition to being heard by Zoom? No, Your Honor. Okay. No, Judge. Okay, Ms. Vanna, you may begin, please. Thank you, Your Honor. The parties have reached an agreement, Judge, um, to grant the department TMC of the kiddo today. Um, with some additional provisions. I think that mom has already filled out her court-appointed application form. So I've approved it while we're in the waiting room, in the breakout room. Okay, fantastic. Um, and so the parties have agreed that visits will occur one time per week at the CPS office, um, and that if mom misses a visit, she will then have to start providing a 24-hour confirmation. If she shows up um, smelling of alcohol, if she... Um, it looks like she's under the influence, is acting like she's under the influence or belligerent, um, the visit will be stopped and she will not have one. Um, she is going to provide care items for the child in lieu of child support at this time. She will, she has an OSAR scheduled, I believe for February 8th, and she mm -hmm. is to attend the OSAR appointment. Um, we're including the standing orders for drug testing and Let's see here. If she fails to go to her OSAR appointment, then she the order is that she go to inpatient immediately. Um, she is going to go to a PHP program. No, and, 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 and successfully complete the inpatient, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, she will contact the partial hospitalization program within 24 to 48 hours um, in George, at Georgetown Behavioral Health. Is that right, Becky? Okay. Um, and she will have to contact and get enrolled and provide the department information, obviously the releases. If she does not contact the PHP, um, if she doesn't get enrolled or if she is not eligible, for the program, and then it's ordered that she go to inpatient and successfully complete inpatient. That, that's a different kind of inpatient than we previously talked about, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see here. All other services will be um, developed at the family group conference. We're going to ask for a hair strand drug test for her to complete that by 2-2 at noon. So that's this Friday. That her weekly UAs consist of ETG testing. And that is all I have at this time, Judge. Everything else will be developed at the family group conference. Um, making sure where's, Catherine, is that everything? Yes, that's everything, just as long as um, everybody also understands that she's not to return to um, the home uh, here where Maya is. I know that that's also included on the emergency protective order, but I also want it to be clear that that's a provision in here as well. Did you say anything about mom signing releases so we can get her recent testing Yes, um, that's part of the standing orders and mom will be required to sign releases for all of her mental health, inpatient, outpatient programs and the PHP program and any services she does for the department. Thank you, Rose. Catherine's statement. Um, hold on just a second. Uh, Miss McAnally, uh, do we, I say, I have that the mother is not to be at the home where the child is. Um, don't we need to put some sort of and remain 100 feet or some kind of distance type thing? She current, currently has an EPO in place, and um, that's good until, um, I believe, sometime at the beginning of March. Um, and she has to stay 500 feet away from grandma and the residents. Okay, well, I'm going to put that in here because that's going to expire before our next hearing. It's March 26th, Judge. Okay. That's our next hearing. March 26th. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And it's grandma, not grandpa? That's correct. The current one um, is for grandma. Okay. And your honor? Yes, ma'am. I think I would like for all of the um, child items in the department to be able to agree 
to some kind of contact once the emergency protective order is is gone um if if we think that that's appropriate okay for the purposes of visits got it okay okay miss van anything else no your honor we believe that this is in the best interest of the child okay uh miss lang anything else for miss hopkins um your honor i do want to just let the court know that she is under the care of a psychiatrist and she um, has medications and she's going to have a follow-up appointment with the <clears> psychiatrist <throat> also on february 8th and I just would like to know if we can go and get her color for the uh, color scheme, because I'm giving her the instructions for that today. If Marianne knows what that's going to be or Teresa. Okay. And she's going to sign releases for her, her psych psychiatrist also. Yes, ma'am. All, all providers. Okay. And while Ms. Davidson's looking that up, uh, one of my questions I had is Ms. Vanna, is the uh, hair strand to include alcohol or just drugs? Just drugs at this time. I think later if we need to, we know that alcohol is a problem at this time. So we're just maybe in 90 days or later in the case, we'll ask for a hair strand for an ETG. Okay. But uh, it is in the uh, UAs, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Casa, y'all need anything else? I do not. I'm in agreement. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McAnally, how about you? Um, no, nothing further, Your Honor. I think that we're all on the right track. The only thing I would say is I would like for mom to hear this, that um, the faster she gets treatment, the faster she gets the ability to show us she can be sober in the community, the faster we can begin to rebuild and, and reconnect her with her daughter. And I think that that's what's in Bias best interest. So I'm really hopeful that she will do this quickly and um, show us she can be sober and in a good place for Maya. Okay. Uh, Ms. McNally, did you talk to the placement about um, being protective and not allowing mom to come to the area and stuff like that? I am here now and she's actually sitting with me. Um, she's just in another chair. Um, we are going to talk about that a, a bit further when we got off here. But yes, we have, have kind of talked about what does that look like. Um, and I'm going to talk to them in more depth about that now that I know kind of what the parameters are that the court set. Okay. Okay. Uh, Got all that. Okay. Ms. Hopkins, uh, do you have any, or you got your parents here too. Do you or the child, well, let me, let me kind of put one before the other. Can you give, talk to me please, ma'am, about, uh, <clears throat> about Maya's paternity, who you think her dad is, who you think her dad isn't, uh, anything like that that you know? Um, I had only seen him maybe a total of five times we were friends for just a brief period and it didn't work out what was his name ezekiel i don't know his last name ezekiel something and where were you austin and austin texas okay is do you know anything about where he works anything about his family anything like that now that he had an ankle monitor on for an assault charge that's good do you know i happen to know if that was like Ankle monitor out of Travis County. Do you know where his charges were pending? I know we were also, I, I would assume Travis County just because of the area. I'm not quite sure. Okay. Maybe I have this old phone, phone number. On. I have his old phone number, but he's changed it since. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all the information <laughs> I know. He had a ankle monitor for assault with uh, a weapon, I believe. Okay. And uh, if you can give uh, Miss Lang that old phone number and she can pass it on to CPS, something's better than nothing, you know? And um, let me ask you a kind of a weird question. You weren't the victim of that assault, were you? No. Okay. Um, and do you think that there's anybody other than Ezekiel who could be Maya's dad? Um, there... Might be one other possibility, but it would be very far off with the timing. Okay. And what was his name? If you know. Jorge. I don't know Jorge. his last name. Yeah. Okay. Was he in Austin also? No, he was in Leander. Okay. Kind of Leander to me. Austin, place of him, you know? Like I know more about him. She knows more about him and has his place of employment. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, well, Miss Lang, if you can get that information, I don't need to. I, I think now that we know, you know, know a little bit, that's good. Miss Savanna, yes, ma'am. Judge, can we appoint an attorney for the unknown, um, for the unknown father? Do you want to? Do you want to now? I, I would say let's go ahead and get get that done. Okay. And maybe for, um, I would say for the unknown and any alleged father that we might get. Okay. While I'm looking this up, uh, excuse me, Ms. Hopkins. I don't, yeah, I didn't ask you this. Do you, or your, your dad's there with you. Do you or anybody in your family have any Native American heritage? Indian heritage? Mm -hmm. No. No. Okay. no. They're Hawaiian judge. He's Hawaiian. But she, Oh, I she's Hawaiian, but he's Puerto Rican. <laughs> I think that's all United States stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're good. Yeah. And it's and it's grandpa, Judge. This is, I know you look young enough to be her daddy, but this is her grandfather. Oh, it's her grandpa. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. You, 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 you do, you, you've had a good life or you, you use good face lotion or something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can use good face lotion often with her. Um, I'm going to point, let's see, wow, everybody's kind of even. Somebody's in the waiting room. Y'all, I'm not going to let people, if CPS people especially, if she doesn't put her name on here correctly, she's not coming in. We've only been doing Zoom for about four years, so figure it out. Um, I'll point Natalie Bennett. And is that just for the unknown, or can she be appointed to this is alleged Ezekiel and Jorge? Everything. Okay, so um, silly question, Miss Miss Hopkins, because I don't think you've had time to do this, but you haven't been to Attorney General Court or anything else regarding uh, <clears throat> Maya, have you? No. Okay. No DNA has ever been done or anything like that, right? No. Okay. I don't have enough information to even like find them right right i just have to ask silly questions i just have to ask okay <laughs> okay okay anybody need anything else of miss hopkins or no, anything honor no i just had a question for miss davison if she is able to if she was able to figure out what color he texted it to me it's blue oh, okay blue yes johnny on the spot i'm telling you perfect Okay, Ms. Hopkins, after today, there's going to be a meeting called a family group conference. And I'm sure Ms. Lane's already explained this to you. Ms. Van have talked about it also. At the family group conference, that's where your service plan is going to be developed. And your service plan is stuff kind of like we've talked about today, but, you know, it's, it's a more intense list of things that you have to do, to, you have to comply with, okay? Um, and like I think Ms. McAnally said, the quicker you can get this going, uh, the quicker you can start working on compliance. <laughs> We can all get out of here and your family and Maya's lot. Okay. Um, I tell everybody at every hearing, you have to comply with your service plan or your parental rights could be subject to termination. Do you understand that, ma'am? Yes. Okay. Okay. And normally I, uh, our next court date is uh, 326, like Ms. Lang said. Uh, I normally on court dates, um, I'm in person. Y'all can uh, be by Zoom. Does everybody still agree uh, to Zoom? Yes, Your Honor. I figured y'all did. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that's about it. Uh, thank you, sir, for coming to court. And I think your wife must be on, grandma must be on uh, the screen also. Uh, thank y'all for visiting ahead of time and getting everything worked out. And like I said, the quicker we can get all this done. And Miss McNally, it's pretty cool that you're at the house where the child is. I don't, you know, see, that's, that's one good thing about Zoom. You can kind of one stop shop, you know? So mm -hmm. I, I like that. Um, I don't think, I think we might have to give you a gold star award for creating something. I'm not sure we've ever had an in line at a placement during a hearing before. So that that's, I mean, I, I she's just, she's just doing this judge. Uh, well, uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. And that, and she doesn't want to get in trouble for not seeing my kiddo when this was the only time it fit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Hey, it, it's a, it's a good plan. I like it. So, uh, Okay, well, good luck to everybody, and um, good luck with the uh, family group conference, and I'll see y'all in March, hopefully not before. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm not seeing my client. Is she not signed in? 
Maybe they're in the waiting room still, huh? I don't know. I was going to see if she sent me a message or anything. I mean, we just talked to her like yeah. an hour and a half ago. The grandparents said they signed in. She just texted me. I'm sorry. I couldn't get my thing to <laughs> connect. But she just texted me and said she was in the waiting room. Okay, um, perfect. So I don't know if she labeled her um, phone, but she was having some trouble downloading the new app on this new phone and it's an Android and I was, I'm not real good with Androids. So. <laughs> okay. In the waiting room are Jean and Lisa Evans, Samsung and somebody, Angela, the Casa, app, who is Samsung. That's probably, uh, probably our client. <laughs> Jean and Lisa Evans, they're the app there. The grandparents. The yes. Okay, well, it's 2 16. Uh, Mr. Sturmer, was the mother sir, personally served? It's my understanding that she was, Judge, uh, yesterday morning, I believe. We're going to go on and proceed via Zoom, and we have until about 3 50. So uh, everybody's been sworn. Mr. Sturmer, you may begin, please. Judge, I'd first, or I'd like to call it Jean Earl Evans Jr. Okay, please. He's been and sworn. Your daughter is Natasha Roberts. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and some time back here recently, uh, you and your wife became the placement uh, pursuant to this uh, child protection case. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, prior to the CPS case, did you have any concerns for the children's well-being? Yes. Can you briefly explain those? Uh, just uh, based on um, after their mother had regained contact with us in August of 2023, um, we noticed that uh, something was wrong with her mental state. Um, and then also her current boyfriend at the time um, was uh, someone that we heard that was not uh, a very good person and uh, had been uh, previously incarcerated for domestic violence. So then we became concerned about the children. Um, and then there had been times that uh, they would come to our house because we only lived two doors up from them uh, and uh, expressed that, uh, you know, their mother was, uh, you know, angry or the, her and her boyfriend were fighting um, to a point of physical altercations between the two of them. Um, and then uh, one day or one evening, I should say early morning at like 1230 in the uh, morning, um, Janie had actually called me to let me know that she was standing outside our front door. And when we opened up the door, she had blood all over her and stuff because of the fact that she said that her mother had attacked her um, after her boyfriend had left. Not Janie's boyfriend, but my daughter's boyfriend. So then we became real concerned with the fact that some things were going on in the house that we weren't uh, being told the, the truth about. Um, and then uh, once we had we had filed a, a report um, stating uh, not so much as far as Natasha goes, but against her boyfriend, um, then when CPS uh, had come to our house on December 11th uh, to basically ask us questions about, you know, some things that were going on in the house, uh, apparently after they had talked to the children at school. And during that time, as we were talking to them, um, approximately four hours after they were here, they had told us that they were in the process of removing the children and placing them with us. Okay. You had mentioned some, some mental health concerns. Do you know if your daughter's ever been uh, diagnosed with any mental illnesses? Um, she had, had been taking to Advent mental health. No, um, at, no, she wasn't diagnosed with anything. Hold no. on, ma'am. Ma you can't say No, that. We're, we're speaking to your husband. You can get um, off in a minute. Um, no, not previously. I mean, we weren't aware of any mental health issues going on with her. Um, we didn't actually find out anything until after... Um, she had been acting erratically one day, so our youngest daughter had called the um, police to have them come out because we were concerned about her welfare as far as uh, to herself and possibly to others because she was driving at the time. 
Um, and when the police had come to see her, they had taken her, the police had taken her to have her involuntarily admitted into the Advent Mental Health Care Facility out on Clear Creek Road. Um, at that time, uh, she was there and she spent about five days there. But then when she had gotten out, um, they had did say that in the, I guess the doctor's report or something that they gave her after she left, that she had been diagnosed being bipolar and had uh, manic depression with uh, psychotic episodes. Okay, when was she? When was she there? Um, it was. Oh, it was. Uh, I believe they had taken her on the day before New Year's Eve, which would be the thirtieth of January. Oh, I'm sorry, thirtieth of December. <laughs> okay, so this was after the removal, correct? Correct. Okay. Um. Now, you, you mentioned that she had had some erratic behaviors. Can you go into more detail about the erratic behaviors? Yes. I mean, as she had mentioned uh, to my wife and to her sister that she was hearing voices in her head, um, like 10 or 11 different voices in her head. And one of the voices that she was hearing was basically telling her to kill someone or to hurt someone. And I mean, she could be talking to you nice as can be one minute and then you know five minutes later she could be just absolutely in a rage um so you never knew exactly what you were gonna be or who you were gonna be dealing with at the time um she had uh gotten into one of those episodes uh after the children had moved and, and stuff where she broke all of her dishes in her house and she just went through her house and destroyed things and was throwing things out in the street um and uh it was just you never knew who you were going to get and even though she had been told multiple times that after the children were removed that she could not come to our house she could not see the children she could not have any contact she would still end up showing up at our door We'll get to that in just a second. I, I just okay. kind of want to put everything in, in order. Yes. Um, but so since we were, uh, or since the children were placed with you, um, has she had any uh, visits that were authorized by CPS or this court? No. Okay. And has she tried to initiate any contact with the children? Uh, not, I mean, as far as, I mean, she would write them letters, but other than that, I mean, if she was outside for any reason uh, and like, I take you know, our grandson to school. One morning she was parked in our driveway. I made him stay back in the house and I told her that she needed to leave. Um, and then she would leave and then I proceeded to take him to school. So, Okay, I mean, so you actually told her to leave that day? Yes. When was that? Um, oh, boy. Um, uh, Roughly, how long ago was that? Roughly, uh, that, that had to be um, probably about three weeks ago. Okay. And since then, has she attempted to come to your home uh, to see the children or to initiate any kind of contact with you or your wife? I mean, yeah, she would come to our door. I mean, she would ring her doorbell. She'd knock on the door. She would, I mean, instances like that, or if she's seen us outside, you know, going to go somewhere or something, she would, you know, be walking up the sidewalk and come up to the to talk to us I think um, okay so during those contacts have you continued to ask her to leave yes I mean we would we would tell her that she is not supposed to be coming to our house because the children were there um, and that she was not to be anywhere around them you know, as far as any contact with them, even if it was, she couldn't even come into our driveway. I mean, it's, it's she okay. And then despite your request, she's continued to do so, correct? Correct. And have you talked to law enforcement about a, a criminal trespass warning? Uh, we had called um, the one time that uh, CPS did tell us that if she came to our door to call the police, we did call the police. But I was informed at that time that the police really couldn't do anything about it because of the it being a child removal through CPS, that it was a civil matter and that they handled criminal matters. Um, but I did ask the officer at that time to go, if he would go down there and tell her or let her know that she is not supposed to be coming to our house. 
um, but she has still came to our house even after that. Okay. Now, in any of these contacts uh, with your daughter, has she uh, made any uh, threats towards you, your spouse, or the children? I mean, she has uh, face to face, no. Um, but she has been, like I said, in her in her rages. I mean, it's she could be talking to you one minute fine, and then the next minute she could be upset and just start going off. Um, now she has made the threats uh, via over uh, when while she was in the hospital. Um, she did call our daughter, um, our youngest daughter, and she did say something about you know killing my wife. On, when she's on that phone call, which I, I take it was a recorded phone call, she's not allowed to use a cell phone. Um, and also the last time that we had um, tried to take her to a facility out in Temple, um, when she had told us she, she wanted to go, by the time we got there, she was absolutely not going to be wanting to go. Um, but then after she had taken off and we had called the Temple police to try to track her down, she had made a comment to one of the officers there that she, if she ever saw my wife again, that she would kill her. Okay. Um, has she made any of these statements to the children or within uh, hearing of the children? No. Okay. Well, have your children or have the children uh, actually observed her coming to the house or, or exhibiting any erratic behavior? Yes. Okay. How, do, how are they handling that? Uh, not very well um uh our grandson he still gets very upset and um uh, nervous when she's around or when she comes to the door even if he even if he sees her out of you know parked there when she used to drive parked in her driveway or driving down the street if he if we we had seen her and then our granddaughter is also the same way she gets very nervous when she comes to the door even though we keep the door locked at all times um, she still gets very nervous that when her mother shows up. So in your affidavit, you mentioned that Troy is having high blood pressure issues. Uh, is he actually, is he actually gone to the doctor for uh, blood pressure uh, yes. issues? Yes. He, he was actually uh, taken into urgent care because he was feeling well. And that's when they noticed that he had high blood pressure. Um, so then we had gotten a referral and actually my wife had taken him to a cardiologist out at the uh, McLean's out in Temple, the Children's Hospital. Um, and that's when they diagnosed him with stage two hypertension. Um, okay. And are you aware of if he's ever had any issues with blood pressure in the past? No. Okay. Um, so in order to get a protective order, I'm sure you've been informed that you have to show that family violence um, has occurred in the past and that it's likely to occur in the future. Um, do you reasonably feel threatened for your life and for the children's life uh, due to your daughter at this time? Yes. Okay. Um, and that's due to her erratic behaviors and the threats that have been made? Yes. Okay. And do you believe that if an order is not issued by this court prohibiting her, uh, from staying away from you and your wife and children in the in the children um, that there is a potential for future harm or future threats yes okay um, is there anything uh, any events that are of importance that you feel that you need to make the court aware of at this time uh, yes as you, you as you had mentioned about the, the violence part of it is that the gentleman that she was seen as I had mentioned had been previously incarcerated for domestic violence and he did actually had attacked my daughter um, at one time and to the point of banging her head on. And then he had also physically had. Let me let me let me stop you real quick. Mr. Coates is not the subject of this protective order. Uh, your daughter is the subject of right. this protective order. Do you have any any other incidences regarding your daughter towards you, your spouse or the children that you need to make the court aware of? Uh, just as far as what the detective had told us when the children went to scene uh, during their forensic interviews, um, the detective did tell us that Janie did, I guess, state during her uh, interview that um, that her mother did have some physical altercations with her. I don't know to what extent. He didn't say. Um, only to the point of that. Objection hearsay. Well, we'll move on. So you can't you can't Sorry. say what what the detective said that somebody else said. Um, is there any other incidences that you have witnessed um, 
that you feel like you need to make the court aware of? Not since the children have been removed from their home, no. Okay. But today you are requesting, and, and I know that this must be hard, uh, you know, dealing with your own daughter and everything, uh, but you are requesting today that that this court issue a protective order uh, protecting you, your spouse, and these children from their mother. Is that correct? That is correct. And let me just ask you just for, for clarification, uh, are, are you wanting your, your daughter to get help? Yes. Do you, you don't want to see her in jail. You want to see her getting help, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Uh, Ms. Bennett, Ms. Vistasen, any questions? I have a few. Okay, Ms. Bennett. Thank you. Um, Mr. Evans, um, has your daughter ever um, assaulted you in any way? No. Has she assaulted your wife? Uh, yeah, I mean, not not recently, no. I mean, but in the past, there has been altercation. Well, in the past, I mean, years ago. More than two years ago? <laughs> yes. So in the past two years, has your daughter pushed or hit or something like that? No, because our daughter hasn't been talking to us for two years. Okay. Um, and in the last two years, have you seen her push or hit the children? No, I have not. And the incident where you said Janie showed up on your doorstep and said her mom attacked her? Is, is that she said Natasha attacked her? Yes. Um, but you weren't there when that happened, right? No, that was prior to them being removed. Okay. Um, did you ever have a conversation with Natasha about that at any point? We've tried to talk to her about it, but she doesn't remember ever doing that. Okay. And <clears throat> under the first court order, um, Natasha was supposed to be allowed to come by the house when the kids were at school to either bring some of their stuff or food or necessary um, items or things for them. Is that right? Do you recall that? That's correct. Okay. And did she come outside of those times? I mean, yes. I mean, she would just show up at any time. She Has she threatened you specifically? No. And has she specifically threatened your wife, to your knowledge? Not to her face, no. Has she threatened the kids? No, because she hasn't had any contact with the children. Have you heard her telling anybody else she wants to hurt the kids? No. Has she... Um, done any sort of violent acts to you or your wife or the kids? Not, uh, not I mean, no. I mean, not other than just, just screaming and yelling type thing. I mean, no. When, when she's screaming and yelling at you, do you feel like that she's going to then hit you or get physical with you in some way? Uh, I'll, I'll let you know that she does carry knives in her purse. So, I mean, it is, you never know what's going to happen until it actually happens. And during these episodes that she has of the, the rage side of things, you never know what's going to happen. So, I mean, it, it could possibly happen. I mean, I could go down there and expect not to do, you know, have anything to happen, but then it possibly could. I don't know. Okay. So has she pulled a knife on you yet? No. Okay. And um, since the children were placed with you, have you or your wife 
reached out to contact Natasha? Normally, if we talk to Natasha, it's after she had tried contacting us, whether it be a phone call or text when she did have a phone. Okay. So y'all are just res responding to her trying to get a hold of you? Yes. Okay. So you can't think of any time since the kids have been placed with you that either of y'all have reached out to her or gone to see her or anything like that? We have gone down there to see her upon request of other organizations to try to help her out you know, in different ways, such as whether she needed food or needed water or something of that nature. Yes. Um, did y'all go see her when she was at a hotel for a couple day, a day or two or however long she was there? Once or twice to take her some things. Yes. And did you feel um, worried at that time that something that she was going to commit some sort of violence or assaultive type thing against you. Yeah, that's where, she, that's when she was there. And that's, that was the Monday that we ended up taking her to temple because of the fact that we found a facility that accepted her insurance. But then as we got, when we got there, I mean, she wasn't too, she agreed to it. She wasn't happy about it when we left to go there, but by the time we got there, she's seen it. It, it just escalated into the fact that she thought it was a jail or a prison that we were trying to put her into. And she got very hostile at that time. So, so who drove her to Temple? I did. Okay. And was it just you and she? No, it was myself and my wife and, and her. Okay. So the three of you? Yes. And did she do anything in the car on the way there? No, she kept pretty quiet. Okay. I pass the witness, Judge. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Gustafson, do you have any questions? Um, I don't have any questions, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Mystic, any questions? Yes. Um, Mr. Evans, were you present at the adversary hearing where Judge Mabry made a ruling that your daughter was not to come to your property when the children are there? Uh, I believe that if that was the last hearing, we were on in the waiting room, but we were never part of the actual hearing itself. That's right. Were you informed of what the judge's ruling was? No. So as we sit here today, you never knew that the judge ordered that Natasha was not supposed to come to your residence while the children were there? No. Okay. Um, it's in the affidavit that you all signed that you knew that that the judge had ordered she wasn't supposed to be coming to your home. Well, I mean, we had talked to the CPS. Right. Okay. I'm going to ask it again. Okay. Were you informed after that hearing of the judge's ruling that Natasha was not to come to your residence while the children are there? Yes, by CPS. Okay. Okay. Um, when, did, and you have testified she has come to the driveway. She's banged on the door. Is that right? Correct. Were you advised to, did you reach out to CPS? Yes, when she did it, we did. Have you, you've told the CASA, correct? Yes. You've talked with me? Yes. You've called law enforcement? Correct. You drove your daughter to try to get her help to Temple, is that right? Correct. Was it, is that the last time or was that when the threat of murdering your wife was made in front of a police officer? Yes. And was the threat in a way that if I get in the car with my mother, then I'll kill her? And is that the gist of it? Uh, yes. I mean, to, to the I mean point, tell us. The, the, well, it was to the point that the officer had reached out and stated that what she had said, which then prompted us to file the paperwork for the protective order guest. Okay. And he, did he say if she had gotten in the car, she'd be arrested? No, I mean, we, he would, had just mentioned that and she was. Objection, your honor, hearsay. Okay. We'll move on. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so is, and was that what prompted you filing the protective order? Yes. As we sit here today, has anyone been able, um, professional-wise, since Judge Mabry's order, um, you reaching out to law enforcement, attorney, um, has anyone been able to get her into a facility or arrested her? No. Um, 
have you and I had a discussion that if this court grants this protective order, that you and your wife cannot facilitate, talk, call, respond to your daughter? Yes. And have I explained the seriousness of a protective order? Yes. Do you want your daughter arrested? No. Would you like her to get some help and stay on her medication? Yes, we would. You have a grandson that has been affected by her ranting to where he's got a physical issue now. Is that correct? Correct. Um, and is it your request today that the court grant this protective order in hopes of maybe your daughter going to get some help without it being through law enforcement and going to jail? Yes. But is this the only means? Have you tried all sorts of alternative means to filing this? Yes. That's all I have, Judge. Pass the witness. Thank you. Mr. Sturmer, anything else? Uh, just briefly, since uh, we were in court, and you may have already answered this, since we were in court and the judge ordered uh, that your daughter not come to your residence, how many times has she come to your residence? Oh, um, I would say probably like 12, 15 times. So you think it'd probably be safe to say at this point that she's not going to abide by the injunction ordered by this court previously. I'm hoping that she would, but she, uh, the answer would be no. Okay. And so at this point, the only option is to take further measures to protect yourself, your spouse, and your children, and, and the children that are placed with you. Correct. That's all I have, Judge. Ms. Gustafson or Ms. Bennett, anything else? Mr. Evans? No more questions. No. Ms. Okay. Mystic, anything else? Thank you. Ms. Sturmer, next witness. Uh, briefly like to call uh, the caseworker, Celine Murphy. Okay. She's been sworn. Thank you. And the department, along with the request of others, has uh, sought out this protective order uh, against Natasha Roberts uh, for the protection of the children, Troy and Janie, as well as their current placement. Is that correct? Yes. And since you or when when did you first get involved in the case um i got involved in the case when the department got um, custody of the children i think that was the 12th of december okay and since that time have you had any contact with natasha roberts yes sir have you observed any erratic or uh, violent behaviors from her um i had the first time i met with natasha was at um the office Hold on, Ms. Strummer, ask the question again since so she kind of froze midstream, mid sentence. Okay, Ms. Murphy, I was asking you uh, since your involvement, have you observed any erratic or bizarre uh, behaviors from the mother? Um, just the first time that I met with Natasha in the CPS office, um, what, it was the initial meeting, and she did um, display some verbally aggressive behavior. Um, and I had my mentor at the time and I had to cancel the meeting because um, it wasn't going going well. Okay. And so what, what do you mean whenever you say, uh, did you say verbally threatening behavior? Uh, like a, just verbally aggressive. Um, the only threat at the time that she made was that she was going to go pick up Troy and Janie um, multiple times during that meeting. And um, we explained that um, law enforcement would have to be involved if that's what she was going to do after the meeting with us. Okay, so do you recall the date that this meeting happened? Um, this was... Roughly, if you don't I know the exact date. It was about the 28th or so of December. Okay, and so at that time, she stated that she was going to go pick up Troy and Janie and indicated that she was not going to follow the court's order. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And since then, are you aware uh, of whether or not she has uh, well, gone into the presence of the children or attempted to go in the presence of the children in violation of this court's order? Um, I've just been aware by um, the caregivers when she has approached the door and um, door well, and right. knocked and that sort of thing. Okay. So you've been in contact with the, the placement and, and they've been uh, relaying their concerns to you? Yes, sir. Okay, and you've also uh, attempted to talk to law enforcement about getting further protection, is that correct? Yes. Uh, but really that was pretty unsuccessful, is that right? 
Yes, sir. Okay. Um, as we stand here today, uh, do you believe that the children and the placement are in danger if this court does not render a protective order? Yes. Okay. Have you observed uh, the children since all this has gone on? Um, yes, I have met with the children um, about two or three times. Okay. And do you believe that they're being uh, detrimentally affected by all this? I do. Okay. What would make you believe that? Um, mo both times that I've spoken with them, they have made it clear that um, a lot of the back and forth with their mother is becoming overwhelming. Um, they believe that right now they just want to stay where they are. Um, and the, the involvement of their mom coming to the house and sending the letters um, is confusing them. Okay. And, and did you tell me earlier that you've only actually met with uh, Natasha Roberts face to face one time? I've met with her face to face twice. Okay. When was the second time? The second time was last Friday. Okay. Where was that contact at? This was outside of her residence. Okay. And what was the, what was the reason for that contact? Um, just to follow up with her, um, I went with the coworker to give her the family plan that we came up with. So that way she could be able to speak with her attorneys on it. Um, just that. Okay. Um, at any time, have you discussed with her, um, the fact that she's not supposed to be going to the home or anything? Um, I did talk with her and tell her that as of right now, she does not need to continue going to the home. Um, because that was what the agreement was at the last court hearing. And I also um, just made sure to let the caregivers know to notify the police if she does show up. Okay. Whenever you discussed that with Ms. Roberts, what was her response? Um, she just proceeded to say that she understood and that she cares about her children and wants to get them back. Okay. So in your contacts with her, she did not actually say that she was going to violate the court's order or anything like that? No, not other than um, that first initial meeting. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Anybody have any questions, Ms. Murphy? I do. Ms. Bennett? Um, Ms. Murphy, if I understand correctly, um, Natasha met with you at your office and said that she wanted to go pick the kids up after the meeting with you that day? Yes, ma'am. And did she scream at you or get in your face when she said that? She did not. Did she go that day to pick up the kids and try to get them out of the grandparents' house? Not that I was told, no. Um, but we notified them um, afterwards to just be aware. And has she ever physically harmed you or caused you any bodily injury? No, ma'am. Has she ever threatened you? No. I passed the witness. Okay. Ms. Gustafson. Uh, yes, I just wanted to follow up. So you had the case, you said December 28th? Um, no, I received the case when, um, as a protege on the 12th of December. So I was secondary on the case. So when I talked to you earlier this morning and you told me you'd only had the case for a week, that's not exactly true, correct? You, you had been aware of the case since December 12th. Yes, ma'am. But I've been case so you for a week. So it became officially yours. Yes. A week ago. Yes. Were you present the day of the adversary hearing? Um, I was next to Raven when she was on Zoom. Did you listen to the adversary hearing? Yes. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Miss Mystic. No questions. Okay. Um I, have a, I just kind of have a general question to everybody. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sturmer, did you have any more? No, ma'am. Didn't, didn't I make an order that everything kind of setting a uh, family group conference, 
service plan and all that. Didn't I make an order that all of that is supposed to go through the attorneys first? Yes, Judge, and I believe that Ms. Gustafson has talked to Ms. Murphy since then, and they're trying to work some of that out. Okay. Your, Your Honor, uh, if we could briefly go into a breakout room, uh, that would be very helpful. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Trinidad, can you send the lawyers and cause it to a breakout room, please? It, it would be helpful if you could join us as well. Oh, okay. Me too. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody back. Okay, I'm going to have some orders that don't pertain to the protective order when we get done with this, but let's see. Um, Mr. Sturmer, you, uh, I believe, did you have any more witnesses, Mr. Sturmer? No, ma'am, I don't. Okay. Ms. Gustafson, Ms. Bennett, do y'all have any witnesses? Um, may I ask my client if she wants to testify or say anything or not? Yes, ma'am, that's fine. Okay, Natasha, would you like to testify or not? Yes, ma'am, I would. Okay, then I would call my client, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Natasha, you were sworn, weren't you? No. I think, okay, raise your right. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Okay, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. And Ms. Bennett, if your client wants to sort of do short narratives, okay, then, uh, I'm okay with that because of time. But if it gets right. out of hand, we're going to have to kind of change it. But you know what I'm talking about. Got it. Okay. Um, can you state your full name, please? Natasha Lee Roberts. Okay. And Natasha, you heard um, the CPS caseworker, Ms. Murphy, and you heard your dad testify, right? Yes, I did. Okay. Are there any um, statements that were made that you would like to um, tell your side of that about? Oh, yes, I would. Okay. Um, so Jean is incorrect and lied under oath. Um, the dates on when some of these incidents happened, I was already in a hospital. I can tell you the exact dates and show paperwork to that. Now, with my child, my child placed her own face through a wall. When you say that, are you referring to the incident he testified about where she, um, Janie showed up on his doorstep with blood on her? Yes. Okay. So you did not, you did not hit or push or assault her to cause her to have blood. Have I ever, yes, have we gotten into it before we have now? With that also being said, I have also been assaulted by my children. I have had a big goose egg not on my head from my children. Now, there are other things as well that are incorrect. Okay, when tell me the next thing. Miss Celine, when her and Miss Miller were at my house, they were informing me that supposedly there was somebody in my home who had yes. assaulted my child. And when I had asked her about this information, she said that she would go ahead and give it to me um, that prior Monday, which I have never received anything from her. Now, with that also conversation, we did talk about just in general, the state's laws about if somebody were to enter your home without your knowledge, what rights you have. That was the only thing that was said. Now, also, I didn't start talking to my family again until July, not August. It was back in July, a month or so. I understand it doesn't matter, but if we're going to get technical, let's get a little technical. Okay. Um, do, do you, have you, um, 
do you feel that you are going to physically harm or cause bodily injury to your parents or your kids? No, I am not. I also did not speak with any police officer other than saying no in Temple and walking away. Okay. So that is also a lie I would like to have addressed. Okay. So you're saying that you didn't say that you would kill your mom if you had to get in, back in the car with them? No, that did not come out of my mouth to any police officer. Okay. Um, when they took me to Temple, I left. I went walking. A police officer stopped me, asked me my name. I do not have to acknowledge them. I did not do anything wrong other than walk. It was not a crime to walk. I said, nope. I kept walking. He tried to give me another name. I said, nope, and kept walking. So for them to say any difference is a lie. Okay. Um, and you have written letters to your kids, right? Yes, I have. Now, for Jean to say that I was parked in their driveway, the time I was in their driveway was in their vehicle when they pick, he picked me up from the store and allowed me to use their Wi-Fi in his vehicle while I was on my phone. When I was done doing what I was doing, I did leave the premises. I had his verbal permission to do so. So you were not in a separate car and blocked them in? When? That time? No. After you had told me that I couldn't go over there other than doing everything that I have been told out to do is what I've been doing. Now, the only time I have personally ever been in my car on their property was to drop off the stuff that you already know about. And we've already had that discussion. And are you still with um, your ex-boyfriend? No, I do not have him um, at this house. Me and him are not speaking. I have not spoken to him on any social media platforms in any way. I don't even get on social media anymore. Not that I can because I can't. And would you like to be able to see your children? Yes, ma'am, I would. And so if the judge does make any order, um, would you ask that it be able to, to also be modified in any future hearing by this court and this judge? I am willing to do anything I need to to be able to talk to my kids and see my children. And have you actually seen or talked to your children since this case started? I have been writing them letters right. and I write them letters all the time. Mm -hmm. I actually have two up on my mantle that I, I have written to them. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to correct? Um, as of right now, no, I, but me and you will talk more to, tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I passed the witness room. Ms. Gustafson, anything? Any questions? Of Ms. Roberts? Uh, no, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Mystic, any questions, Ms. Roberts? I, I just had a couple. Hi, Ms. Roberts. Um, I was going to ask you, have you been able to get your medication or are you on your medication? No, ma'am. I've been doing writing therapy. Okay. And you're doing that with a therapist? No, I've just been writing in my notebook and it's been helping. I even write a letter to God. Oh, good. Um, do you know if you have any like medical diagnoses from a doctor? Other than the ones from the clinic. And None. what was that, ma'am? Um, give me one second. It was bipolar and depression and anxiety. Thank you. And 
Did they prescribe or have medication? Somebody did prescribe medication for you? Yes, but the dosage was extremely high and I cannot get into a physician to speak with them on these dosage. Okay. Um, if, if the judge said, I'm granting this protective order, and I know your attorneys have explained it, you're not in any way saying you would violate or go to the house. As you said, you haven't been going over since you got the papers. Is that right? Right. I will follow whatever the judge says on it. I'm just asking mm -hmm. that it be lifted to be able to drop off food, drop off letters, and just be able to just go and do, I'm not going to hurt anybody. I haven't been doing anything that I haven't supposed to be other than not doing my medication, but I have been doing writing therapy. And, and you do not recall, or you don't remember, or you're saying it didn't happen that you told a temple police officer, if you had to get in the car that you would kill your mom. I never talked to a temple police officer. Or I don't know if it was Temple, Bell County, may have been a sheriff deputy. I'm sorry. I never talked to the Temple police officer. I never talked to have, an officer. Have you talked to a couple officers for welfare checks in Coppers Cove? I try not to talk to the police. So you're saying nobody has come and talked to you? What well, we call them welfare checks. You're saying nobody and you haven't no, talked to any. Remember, and I voluntarily went to the hospital. Okay. Yeah. You, you didn't want to stay, though. Is that right? You didn't? No, I did stay, stay five days. I guess I'm I'm probably not asking it very well. I know you were in the hospital, but then your mom and dad drove you. Oh, yeah. To a hospital. They drove me to the other hospital. And no, I didn't want yes. to go there. OK. All right. Um, pass the witness. Was, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was at the hotel, I was on the phone with a, a friend of mine. And then all of a sudden my parents call and then they start telling me about this hospital that was supposed to be so wonderful until we get there. And it wasn't anything like they described. You so went I, in, you went in and talked with them and did an evaluation or anything. No, I just no. went in. You, I okay. got the feeling of it and it just, mm -hmm. it wasn't for me. And since I was voluntarily going, I voluntarily left. I understand. All right. Pass the witness judge. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Mr. Uh, Mr. Stromer, do you have any questions of Ms. Roberts? I don't believe so, Judge. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have anything further, Ms. Roberts? Ma'am, you're not a lawyer. You can't ask questions. Thank you. You can talk to Ms. Mystic or something, or Ms. Ms. Austin or Ms. Bennett. Um, Ms. Bennett, any more witnesses? No, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Gustafson, any witnesses? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Casa, uh, you're not going to testify today, are you? No, ma'am. No, okay. okay. Miss Mystic, any witnesses? No, Judge. I thought I read you. Judge, I do have, I do have uh, one other witness. I just have just like two questions for. Okay. Okay. Uh, can I call Lisa Evans, please? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. The placement yes. of these children, is that correct? Um, in the affidavit that was signed by uh, your husband, and I believe you also signed the affidavit, it says that uh, Natasha has threatened you uh, in person and over the phone. Is that all true and correct? Um, yes, but not, okay. I'm not sorry, on the personal phone that was at the clinic. Can you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Not my personal phone. That was when she was in the clinic. Okay. When did she threaten your life in person? Then? She never directly threatened my life in person. Okay. Are you aware that that's what your affidavit says? Yes, I am aware of it, but I did say that. She never threatened me in person. It was all told in, to us. Now, as far as her personalities, it could be either way. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Thank you. Okay. Anybody have any questions, Ms. Evans? No. Ms. Mystic, do you? No, no, no. No. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Okay. Let me ask a, a, another overall question. Uh, somebody brought up visitation. Is uh, Ms. Roberts getting to see the kids now? What What's going on about that? Uh, no, Judge. It was 
Number one, it was the desire of the children not to. And I think um, we would still be requesting that due to the issues with the boy and his blood pressure. I think the court did say that she could write to them, but I think just depending on what the court, if the court grants a protective order, I think it just needs to be if the children's therapist and if mom engages in services, um, that it, we leave it to the therapist recommendation of the children. I think that's maybe what you had ordered before. Okay. Um, and maybe in a therapeutic setting or something like that too. Yes. Okay. Okay. I, I just, I, the docket sheet was kind of vague, so that's why I, I wasn't sure about that. Okay. Um, well, I'm happy to hear from everybody. Ms. Sturmer. Judge, we're asking at this time that you grant the protective order as requested. I believe that there has been um, family violence, um, both in person and uh, or physical and uh, verbal family violence, as uh, those things are defined in the family code. Um, and I just don't believe that the mother is going to uh, abide by any of the court's orders, uh, whether we grant this or whether you grant this protective order or not. But we do need something that. Um, that is in place has a little bit more teeth than the current injunction because it's just going to continue to happen if we if we don't take it to the next step. I don't want her to get arrested, uh, but I think that's pretty imminent. Um, if you grant this protective order, I, I can almost guarantee that it's going to be violated. But at least the children will be protected, and that's what we're asking for. Okay, Mr. Sherman, let me ask you a question. Um, if I remember correctly, and uh, testimony maybe a little bit here today, but in testimony at the adversary hearing. Um, it came up that mom, Miss Roberts, and her, the Evans live on the same property or near each other or something like that. Um, can you Correct. explain that for me, please? It's my understanding that there's one house that separates them. I could be wrong about that, but it's it's really, really close proximity. Um, and that's why in our uh, application and ex parte order, uh, we modified. We typically put in a 500 yard or 500 feet. Uh, barrier from the household, but we just put 50 feet because uh, of the nature of how close they are. Um, okay. So really, it's just don't go onto their property. Uh, she can still be on her property, just not on theirs. Um, and are they in a like a, a rural area or a neighborhood or what? It's my understanding it's a neighborhood. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Gustafson or Ms. Uh, Bennett? Um, yes, Your Honor. We would ask that you dismiss the protective order. We don't feel that the state has um, met the burden of proof based on the testimony. Um, my client has not ever um, physically assaulted anyone that anyone testified to seeing. She hasn't made any threats to anyone in person, um, the parents, I mean, she hasn't even seen her children at all this whole time. So I'm not sure how she committed any acts against her children. And then as to her parents, like they have, even with all of these things going on, they've continued to, um, talk to her, go to her hotel room, drive her to temple, different things like that. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> if someone is feels that there's a danger of family violence, that they would be continuing to do those things. Um, and I would ask that you not do a protective order. I would also ask, I mean, my, I know we can deal with this next week, but my client wants to see her kids. She wants visitation. Um, she has had no contact that I'm aware of with her kids, except that she writes them lots of letters um, if everything is going to be pushed off onto a therapist, I would like it to be actually verified that they're in therapy and going. And, um, if you do do some sort of protective order, um, of course, please keep in mind, she lives two houses down and the, um, and if it can be able to be modified at a separate hearing, not a protective order hearing, if we do come up with some sort of visitation schedule or plan or something like that, because her number one concern is um, being able to do everything she needs to do to get her kids back. That's her priority. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Bennett. Ms. Gustafson, anything? Um, without being redundant, I would just reiterate what Ms. Bennett said. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Misty. 
Yes, Judge. Um, I believe the mother was present at the adversary hearing where yes. the court ordered that there would be no contact um, at the grandparents' home, um, except maybe in the evenings or in the daytime, because the kids would be there. And that was continuously violated. The other very strong concern I have, Judge, is that um, we have someone that's got some pretty serious diagnosis, is not taking their medication, and it's been prescribed. Um, and I think what came out in the testimony from Mr. Evans was when they were in Temple, the police officer relayed that. Um, I know that there's been welfare checks. It's concerning that mom does not recall talking to police officers. That's very concerning. Um, but I think the banging on the door, the aggressiveness, those type things. We have a child that, because of mother's behavior, is now having a health issue because of the stress of that. But there clearly was testimony that there was a threat of family violence. So I would ask the court to please grant the protective order. I think that in protective orders, if the children, and I understand, I believe they are in therapy, Judge, if their therapist says, you know what, even with the, we can always come back and modify that to exclude the children if a therapist believes it's in their, you know, it's best for them. Okay. Um, Mr. Stark, <coughs> excuse me. Mr. Summer, are you asking that the protective order be the standard two years or just during the pendency of this case? Of course, always subject to the modifications like Ms. Bennett and Ms. Th Ms. Uh, Ms. Dick said. Judge, at the, at the most, I would just ask for it to be for the pendency of this case. But I mean, we're all hoping that the mother can, can get the help that she needs and um, that hopefully at some point during this case, she can start to be rehabilitated and start seeing her children so I don't even care if the protective order lasts to the pendency of the case. If you want to set a shorter uh, duration um, and we can look at extending the protective order in the future, um, as is allowed through the family code, um, we could do that. But uh, I just think that for right now, that there is an immediate need for the protective order. Um, so I would just put that at the, at the discretion of the court. OK, thank you. OK. Um... Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, I am going to grant protective orders prayed for uh, with a couple of uh, differences. I am going to say that the distance is uh, shortened to 50 feet, not the 500 as uh, as it normal protective orders normally are. And I'm going to make it a shorter term of a protective order and say that protective order will expire on 12-16-24. That's our dismissal date. Um, you know, the case could case could be extended six months. Mom could get a monitor return and the kids go home for six months. You know, a lot of things could happen between now and then. Um, you know, things could get better and we just drop the protective order. Um, but those could those are all modifications that we can deal with further further on down the road. Um, or it could be extended to you know regular two years that, that that's under the statute. Um, so anyway, I will grant the protective order. Mr. Schumer, prepare that and send it to me. Um, distance, 50 feet, exp expiration date. Uh, I agree with what Ms. Bennett said, what Ms. Mystic said. We will talk about visitation next week in the, uh, I think it's a status hearing is set next week. Uh, we'll go into that a little bit more then when we have more time. Um, but un a couple things about, let me, I have a, things I wanted to, to talk about and things I wanted to order. Um, it's my understanding that Ms. Roberts' brother and sister have been instrumental and helpful in getting her, just helping her. Uh, they are not the protected parties under the protective order. It's uh, the Evans and the two children. So if they need to help Ms. Roberts, that's great. You know, everybody needs a friend, a family member that, that's able to, to help them. I encourage, uh, I'm done, I'm encouraged, I'm just telling y'all, Evans, that if something comes up, you call the sister, you call the brother. You know, they need to be the ones that mom needs to be able to reach out to and that y'all need to be able to reach out to. Um, not the neighbor, not, you know, not a church church lady, you know, not, you know, somebody down the street or mom's BFF. I mean, not that. Because if y'all, I mean, I'm specifically saying the brother and the sister, but Evans, if y'all reach out to somebody and say, hey, go check on Miss Roberts, that person becomes in an agency kind of relationship with y'all. 
and the protective orders say, you know, you can't, uh, your agents, and it's applicable for mom too, both of y'all, your agents, your, I don't know, it's got a bunch of words, sort of like your people that you put up to do something, you know, so don't, don't go there. I mean, because I don't want anybody to violate the protective order. You know, it, it, I have had the situation in the past where, you know, the, the protected person would call the other one and say, oh, I'm so sad. Please come over. And then everybody was in violation of the protective order, you know. So I, I have to say, you know, y'all got to tell the kids, y'all, Evans, y'all got to be, you know, it's not worth the piece of paper it's worth written on if y'all don't abide by it too. OK, the purpose of protective orders is to protect everybody. And so Miss Roberts knows what she can and she can't do because, you know, it has to be enforced somehow. And the enforcement of a protective order is a lot more stringent than enforcement of the orders, that the, the stay away orders that we have right now. So, Evans, y'all understand that? OK, so, I mean, even if there's a bad time, you got to call the brother and the sister. OK, they, they're the ones that can help. Y'all cannot. Y'all can't violate the protective order. Um, in a different thing dealing with this whole case in general, um, the last order did say uh, no family group conference without Ms. Gustafson, Ms. Gustafson's attendance. Um, it's been made aware to me that there is a permanency conference that the lawyers got notice of later on in February. I don't really understand why we're having a permanency conference or what is those is set before we've even had a family group conference or before I've even ordered Ms. Roberts service plan to be in effect. I don't get that, but there's not going to be any meetings, any family group conference, any permanency conference, it, whatever you want. I don't know what you want to call them, but any kind of meetings in this case without making sure the lawyers cost, you know, making sure everybody here, not maybe not them, but the lawyers and CASA can be in attendance at that meeting. Okay. I know the convener of the family group conference sometimes just says, This can this is set for X day. I don't really care what that convener is going to say. These lawyers, this is an important case. Everybody's trying to help these children and help Ms. Roberts and this family. It's important that everybody be there. And all these lawyers are, I know everybody's busy, but these lawyers practice in a gazillion different courts. And Miss Roberts needs to have both her representation there. So everybody's on the same page. Mm -hmm. So department, do not set anything with, without making sure Miss Gustafson and Miss Bennett are in, included. Uh, that being said, and I'm gonna make that an order of the court outside the protective order. So it'll be a different, different temporary order. I'm also don't want CASA, Miss Mystic or the department to have any contact with Miss Roberts without going through Miss Gustafson or Miss Bennett. Okay, um, just need to do that for multiple reasons. So if CASA, CPS, or Miss Miss Mystic needs to contact Miss Roberts, y'all call. Uh, when y'all call Miss Miss uh, Miss uh, Gustafson or Miss Bennett to arrange that. And, and, and contact means phone calls, that means text, that means going over there, that means all that. And I know sometimes that y'all are going to need to do it. And if you try to call Miss Miss Gustafson, Miss Bennett, and I mean, you got to give them about an hour, 30 minutes or something to respond. Or if you need them immediately and you can't find them, call Chuck, call Dory. Somebody can get a hold of these lawyers if need be. But, you know, this is a very sensitive case and everything needs to go through Ms. Roberts' represent representatives. Um, and that, that includes requesting documents. Um, you know, if y'all need documents, the department needs documents, Ms. Gustafson and Ms. Bennett will get them. I mean, if, if they're gettable, whatever that word is. But go through them so they can go through the per proper networks, get the proper release aside, all that. Okay. Okay, does anybody need anything else? Miss Roberts, I have to tell everybody at every hearing, you have to comply with your service plan or your, whatever that service plan is, I don't know what it is yet, but I gotta tell you, you gotta comply with the service plan or your parental rights could be subject to termination. Um, I guess we'll learn more about your service plan when our hearing is net in a week from today, okay? Okay, well, good luck to everybody. Good luck, Miss Roberts, and I will uh, see y'all in a week. Thank you. Courts in recess.